Well, one of the things that we value so much in Bill Gould is his activist streak. And I think that's, that's what keeps him young and keeps him engaged. Because when a big issue comes along, like a teacher strike or a strike in baseball or a, uh, a, a particularly difficult uh, organizing process like uh, we're seeing now uh, with uh, situations like at Starbucks and Amazon, Bill is all over it because he wants to be uh, both analytical, but he also wants to be relevant. And that's his teaching uh, mission of going out and educating the public not to uh, pontificate all the time about what his views are, but to help understand these issues. And that's so important today, because today labor relations is much, much more of a public event than it used to be. It used to be you didn't comment on negotiations as an outsider because you respected the process. That's still true, but there's so much more at stake that we've got to educate the public about what's wrong with labor law, how it needs to be fixed to better protect workers' rights to organize, and how to produce uh, high-quality labor management relationships. Bill, as, a, as, a, as an important perspective and a voice uh, to offer on all of those issues, and that's why uh, you see him quoted a lot and called on by the media, and why he uh, uh, takes the initiative to write um, uh, pieces that uh, will help educate the public. That's a very, very important public service, uh, uh, particularly at this point in history. What makes Bill Gould so important is impact. And over the years, I've had different positions, such as president and general counsel of MALDEF, the Mexican American Legal Defense and Educational Fund. We consider ourselves the law firm for the Latino community on education, on immigrant rights, on voting rights. Uh, held some other positions in academ academia, uh, in, in public service. I was assistant secretary for fair housing and equal opportunity at HUD during the Obama administration. I ran the only office in the federal government devoted solely to immigrant workplace rights during the Clinton administration. But what, are, what it really comes down to is impact. And that's where I see Bill Gould having an impact on me and an impact on so many over the last 50 years. I got to know him less as my labor law professor, although that was a very meaningful experience, but as someone who uh, we connected on, on voting rights. And certainly, uh, whether it is my own career involved in voting rights or whether it is the uh, impact that uh, Bill's teachings and his activities had on many people across, across California and across the country, it's really all comes down to impact. And that's where he uh, rises candidly head and shoulders above uh, many professors I had. I was pr pr privileged and, and, and pleased to have at Stanford there are different teaching styles, but what really distinguishes to me uh, Bill Gould is the impact that he has on students and their careers. He was speaking to students during Black History Month in February of 1982. Um, and uh, it was a small, a small gathering, Clay Carson put it on and he was speaking about the Voting Rights Act. At the time it was being extended uh, by, by the House and Senate. And I went and got to hear him speak, and we talked about it, the different aspects of it. And later on, he said, as he was preparing to uh, preparing to his presentation, he was looking at the House and Senate debates over the over the recent uh, extension of the act. He says, "I didn't know you were an expert on this because I had actually testified, as I had a unique experience as a one L uh, spending my summer in Washington D.C. with Maldef, thanks to a hearing." A Latino community leader speak at Stanford uh, in the in the spring of of, of eighty one. Uh, I had the unique opportunity not only to intern in Washington D.C. but because I had served on a citizens advisory committee on elections appointed by Mayor Feinstein, as we were preparing for hearings and looking for election officials to speak about uh, voting rights and the positive benefits of bilingual voting, couldn't find any official official. Uh, election officials in the Southwest. And I mentioned, well, I'm, I'm on this advisory committee. I ended up testifying in front of the House Judiciary Committee, which is definitely a, uni a unique experience for someone right after their first, uh, first year of law school. Well, ironically, we had a connection and neither one of us realized it even before I went to law school. In 1979, 
a young man by the name of Brian Henning, uh, active in the labor labor movement, uh, was organizing for uh, Ted Kennedy to run against Jimmy Carter. And, And Brian gathered together a group of people from around the state, including Bill Gould and including me, uh, to, to put out a full page ad in the Chronicle to say, the time is now, Ted Kennedy should run for president against Jimmy Carter. And it wasn't until later did I realize that we were both on it. Uh, <laughs> Professor Gould didn't know we were both on it. He, he did not know uh, my name at the time. Uh, so uh, that was a, a connection that we had even prior to the time I entered law school. Uh, I got to know the, the, the Voting Rights Act side of him uh, through the through the lecture that that he gave uh, for Black History Month, there are parallels between uh, voting rights and employment rights, and being the, as as we are celebrating the first African American uh, member of the faculty, uh, it made sense for him to be uh, knowledgeable and wanting to make sure that uh, students and the Stanford community understood uh, the histories and understood the impact of labor issues as as well as in voting rights act in voting rights act so it was no surprise that he was the speaker uh for for voting rights and at that event i i was interested to hear him uh, it was a, a different facet different area of, of of the law than i was experiencing in class real connection came uh during during the clinton administration and then subsequently in the obama administration uh bill was head of the nlrb uh, and we were both going through conf- confirmation uh, during the uh, during the Clinton years. Uh, I was special counsel for immigration related unfair employment practices, the protecting the rights of of immigrant workers. So there was a case that uh, that uh, Bill was involved with and helpful just to help me get into the NLRB bureaucracy. And that was a case uh, in Minnesota. Uh, and Senator Wellstone, uh, very pro-labor, very active as senator at the time. Uh, he heard me speak, and he said, "Okay, if you're here from if you're here from the administration, here's a problem we're having. It's with Holiday Inn Express workers. The Holiday Inn Express workers, the the uh, the uh, housekeepers uh, were trying to form a union. Uh, they had a couple of meetings with with management. They had a third meeting, and unbeknownst to them." The management had called on had called INS on the on the workers. So instead of having a meeting with with management, INS came in, took everybody away. This was a violation of their rights to organize. It was uh, singling them out, and they had also uh, lost lost pay. We felt as as the, as I said, the the special counsel's office within the Department of Justice. Uh, we had been looking for ways to collaborate with other agencies to make sure that uh, that managers uh, and employers did not pit one agency against another. In this case, it would be INS doing their work as what, uh, compared to what we were trying to accomplish for, for, for workers. Within a short period of time, we were able to coordinate NLRB, EEOC, uh, and my office uh, to make sure that the workers were protected and uh, finally, ultimately, uh, there was a, a, a settlement uh, on all on all aspects, uh, and and then we collectively went to the INS and said, uh, "Your agency can't be used to thwart our work," and 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 INS gave them an extended uh, extended uh, voluntary departure, which enabled them to stay the workers to stay in the country and try to get other means to adjust their status. Uh, but it was it, it was his uh, I think his ability to help me get through the bureaucracy and and just to demonstrate that so many issues are linked uh, again, voting and employment, uh, access, opportunity, uh, all these things are, are are linked together. and that's one of the things that I I, I see about him. Uh, I was always looking at looking out for people and using the law, applying the law. and that's what also, that underscores the importance of having faculty members who have that experience in the legal field, have that experience in the communities, and bringing that into the classroom to inspire students. Just my tremendous admiration uh, for him uh, to really extend himself like very few others over over, over the decades that I've seen. And it's, he's, he is a model for a 
an expert in, in, in law, to be on a faculty, to bring that outside experience and, and, and appreciation of, of people. Uh, I, I, when, when I think of the professors that I've worked with in, in other places and other appointees, have, having, that, having that diversity of experience and, and, the, and the appreciation of, of, of the, the real personal aspects of law is something that uh, I want to instill uh, in, in, in others.